Hey guys, Woodruff here. So we are getting through lower GI. We are getting close to the end. Yay. Um, we just have um, a few other disorders left and then um, we have biliary disorders and then urinary disorders, but we're getting so close. Um, so this video is going to be about hernias. We talked a little bit about hernias when we talked about GERD and we talked specifically about hiatal hernias, um, but that we're going to go more uh, deep into other types of hernias and kind of how they show up, what problems they can cause and stuff like that. Um, what do people complain about? <laughs> I'm just reading my own typing here. What is it? Who do people complain about with this? I think it should say, what do people complain about this? <laughs> but anyway, back to your regu regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> uh, myself, I'm so special. Anyway, um, so hernias, they are a protrusion of internal organs, usually going to be the intestines, like I talked about when I talked about hiatal hernias, and it pretty much it's, um, you know, usually intestines going in a place that they're not supposed to go. So like when we talked about hiatal hernias, we talked about how it's intestines or stomach, sorry, the stomach moving up into the esophagus through the diaphragm. Um, but there's other places that we're going to talk about that you can have hernias or where the intestines can go. And some terminology that you'll want to know is hernias can be reducible or um, they can move back and go like the tissue can go back where it's supposed to go. It can be reduced back into place. You could think of it that way, or it could be irreducible. It's also called incarcerated, which means that, um, you know, there's the, the tissue or intestines or stomach, whatever it is, it's going to a place it's not supposed to go. It's, um, you know, it's go, it's, there's weak tissue and that it's pushing past or pushing into an area of, um, of weak tissue. Um, and it gets trapped out there. And this is a bad thing because like you can see in this picture, um, what can happen is, is that the pressure on the intestines can lead to bowel death, what's known as strangulation. Da, da, da. Anyway, there's different types of hernias um, and they're all named based on their location. So there's a diaphragmatic or hiatal hernia, inguinal hernia that's in the inguinal area. And you can see down here in this picture um, where it's located, but it can also, um, you know, the intestines can go all the way into the testicles. And this is where I always usually tell the story of the this nurse that called me into her room. She's like, I need you to look at something with me. And so she brought me into her room, you know, closed the door. And then like she had her patient um, you know, uh, patients, uh, private parts, you know, just, um, like out open out in the open, um, sitting there and she's like, now just stay and watch. And I was like, so freaked out. I was like, what am I watching? And so, um, and then, you know, at one point I saw the testicles start to move on their own, which they normally don't do that. Um, but, um, you know, the point of this is, is that like when you have intestines in your scrotal area, it can lead you to have like peristalsis, like this patient was having peristalsis in their scrotum, um, you know, because of the intestines that were in them. Sometimes you can also hear the sounds when I've had other patients with inguinal hernias, it sounds like they're having bowel sounds coming out of their scrotum. So it's definitely very interesting. Um, there's umbilical ones, which are in the umbilical area or also known as the belly button. Um, there's femoral, uh, we call it hernias that are in the, like near the femoral artery or femoral vein, um, like down in this picture. Um, and then there also is ventral or incisional hernia. So like if someone's had like a GI surgery or other incision, um, things can slip past there. So uh, what I would expect a patient of this to complain about or expect to find is, of course, I would expect to see a visible protruding tissue. And it's especially when the person um, is tense or tenses their body. Um, and it's going to get, uh, sometimes they can also, I should say, sometimes they can also have pain, uh, especially when they're straining. So I always think back to that episode of um, Friends where Joey gets a hernia and he's trying to work out or something like that to like get an acting job and he's doing exercises and then he um what he caught him but then he like ends up getting a hernia and then it hurts really bad and um we got he keeps trying to put his hand on it to kind of push it back in um, but ends up needing a uh, surgery or something else for that so um there can be pain or it can be painless and it's just the tissues moving it just depends but we do want to assess for pain, assess for any other GI symptoms, because we're especially looking to make sure that it's not getting worse. Now, I can't see from the outside that their tissue is dying. Like, it's not like the, I can see the black tissue or anything like that. So when I say assess for strangulation, really, you're looking for other signs. And some of those might be like projectile vomiting, um, like that rigid abdomen. Think of those signs of peritonitis. 
a hernia is better if they have decreased pain or no pain um, and as long if it remains reducible um, you know ideally we wouldn't have a hernia at all but if we have to have one we want it to be reducible or movable back to where it's supposed to go um, if they're having increased or worsening pain, um, it becomes irreducible or stays in place. Or again, we're going to look for these signs of strangulation. And um, usually the signs of strangulation are severe pain, vomiting, cramping, uh, distension, things like that. So hernias may or may not need surgery. Um, usually they end up progressively getting worse and end up having issues. So what they get done is what's called a herniophory. And I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's as close as I can get. Um, but this looks a lot like hemorrhoidectomy. So just make sure on the exam that you're reading carefully. It, the herniophory is for hernia and the hemorrhoidectomy is for hemorrhoids. Um, and there's different post-op stuff with both of them. It's a very different area. So just want to make sure you read carefully. Um, and then um, symptom management, um, just treating the pain if present, if they're having nausea, vomiting, we'll obviously treat that. Um, as the nurse, what I want to uh, to regularly do with a patient with a hernia is, of course, assess, do those regular assessments for strangulation. Um, I want them to have adequate elimination and monitor their intake and output, because especially when we start talking about like the inguinal hernias and things like that, it can actually affect their ability to void. Um, so I want to uh, watch that closely. Um, and then if they end up having a hernia, uh, hernia repair, what we're going to do um, is teach them like this is something where there was a lot of pressure and we don't want them to uh, make that worse or rip any incisions. So they can take deep breaths, but they shouldn't do any coughing if they have to cough, um, which everyone does usually at some point, then we want to tell them to cough with their mouth open versus closed because closed creates more intra-abdominal pressure. We're going to teach them to splint and splinting again is I'm putting on my I'm putting my hands on my chest but it would obviously be on the abdomen or wherever the hernia was and they put pressure on that to um, help to ease some of the strain like with coughing and things like that so that there's less chance of that the sutures ripping and then teach them no heavy lifting which is greater than 10 pounds for six to eight weeks um, if it's an inguinal hernia a lot of times there can be a lot of scrotal swelling it can be very uncomfortable so what we want to do is apply ice and elevate. Now you're probably sitting there saying, how do we elevate a scrotum? And that's a great question. Um, there are these devices like in this picture, this is a scrotal support device. So we can use something like this. Um, we can also, um, we call it kind of fluffing the scrotum. And what we do is we put um, a bunch of like little towels, pillowcase, not yeah, towels, yeah, towels, pillowcases and stuff under it just to lift it up a little bit. It's not that it needs to be you know, above heart level, but just up higher than what it is. And that can bring them a lot of relief. All right, that's it for hernia. I'll see you next for bowel obstruction. Have a good night.